Hello everyone and welcome to another video with me 320 Simpilot and today we're taking a look at another new feature in the Fly-By-Wire A32NX. Today it is the custom waypoints or user-defined waypoints uh, otherwise known as a pilot waypoints. These are waypoints that we can enter into the MCDU and define where they are, we can give them names and we can then navigate to them and the aircraft will find its way there in a sort of easy navigation mode. So useful for a few circumstances and, uh, and a very advanced feature. It's great to have them in this mod now. It is a sign of how far the lateral navigation systems have come since Fly-by-Wire took over those and they now use their custom lateral navigation. So it is really, really excellent that we're getting such advanced features. This is available in the latest development build, which is what I'll be using for this video today. And of course, we're just setting off on a flight uh, south out of the UK. And we'll take a look at how to use these waypoints and also when we might want to use them. Right, let's get started. Before we do, I'd just like to remind you about our partnership with Apex Gaming PCs. We have our very own line of custom 320 Simpilot gaming PCs focused on flight simulation, of course. There are two options, the Bus or the Manta, both with excellent processors and of course you can customize them on the website before ordering. I did help in the original specification for the two versions you see there, but you can of course customize them further. But most excitingly, we have a sale. 10% off until the 31st of Jan 2022 by using code 320 SIMPILOT. You'll also be supporting the channel if you buy one. And here we are on the flight deck. So let's take a look at what I'm talking about with these uh, these waypoints. So they are hidden away in the MCDU. If you go to uh, flight plan, we can actually type in a waypoint that is defined by us based on the waypoints we already have or other waypoints. So what I'm going to do is demonstrate that because it's, it's a bit of an odd concept and it's, it's not something that's very intuitive at first. Uh, we can type in uh, any waypoint based on any of these waypoints by giving it the name of the waypoint we want to base it off of, then a bearing and then a distance. So we're currently heading south to Bogner. Okay. We're heading on about, what's that, 17, or we're heading 165, tracking about 167 degrees. So if I wanted to put a waypoint past Bogner, instead of going from Bogner to Benbo, we can define a waypoint anywhere we want around, let's choose Bogner as our defining point. So what I can do is type in Bogner and then a bearing. So in this case, if I want to go in a straight line, it would be 167. Or I could use another bearing, let's say 200. So it would be on a bearing of 200 from Bogner. So it would go off at an angle like that. This is of course being based off of the, the navigational sort of rows, the full compass. So uh, for example, Midhurst is on the 210 degrees from me here heading out that way. Um, I've got a video on VOR radials and tracking which might help <laughs> with what I mean by that, but it, it's essentially all the degrees on a compass. So let's try putting a waypoint in. Instead of going from Bogner to Bembo, let's go from Bogner to a waypoint over here on the 200 and then Bembo. So you've got to tell it the waypoint you're basing it off of and then the bearing and then of course the distance. You need all three of those things or the airplane doesn't know what you're trying to aim for. So Bogner on this radial and then I'm going to put a waypoint over here. So let's put it at 20 miles from Bogner. In fact let's make it a bit smaller. Let's put it at 15 miles from Bogner. So to do that I simply type into the MCDU place bearing distance. So place Bogner then slash and the bearing 210 and then the distance and we said 15 and there we go so that is a defined point in space that I want the Bogner waypoint 210 degrees from it 15 miles and I'm going to put it in right after Bogner the airplane will call it PBD01 if I did another one it would be 02 so that's uh, it's a pilot waypoint effectively and there it is added right into the flight plan so Bogner uh, whatever um, our radio was uh, 210 there you go so 210 away from Bogner and then at 15 miles and the, this new LNAV is very good look at that it's uh, it's actually missing it out slightly I wonder they are working on the overfly but uh, no not functioning just yet there we go so um, that is the first waypoint and then if I wanted to build another one after that I could so I could type in uh, I could paste it off of any of these waypoints of course or I could choose the one I've already made so PBD01 and now let's go the other way. So or let's just go south. So 180 and let's do that for 10 miles and put that in after 01. You see now this new waypoint is named 02. So it would always just numerically carry on. And there it is there, just slightly to the south and then back to Bembo. 
So this this is a it's an interesting interesting uh, feature that the real aircraft has. It, it's again a sign of the great flexibility. And now the airplane will navigate towards them. We could go direct to them. You can see that they appear on the direct to page. We could do a radial in, so I could try and intercept the northerly radial in to uh, my waypoint zero two. Oh, let's do three six zero. Ah, that's not working yet. Okay, <laughs> but uh, yeah, there you go. Anyway, it's now a functioning part of our flight plan and we have the ability to fly uh, to or from it and get the airplane to navigate over there using its IRSs and all sorts, even though it's just a completely random waypoint defined by no VOR or anything like that that it can follow with outside sources. It's just what we want it to, to go to. So it's a bit of a, an interesting feature. Why might we want to use this? So first of all, I'll talk about why we might use it. And now I've shown you the, the simplest way to create them. And then I'll show you some of the, the other ways we can fiddle with these waypoints and adjust them. So as you can see here, I've managed to draw a sort of a deviation around something. They're here, probably not weather, but you know, if you were in uncontrolled airspace, maybe. Uh, but it's a bit, bit of a, a time consuming process when you could just fly around in heading. Um, more likely, people would use this as waypoints for example on an emergency turn let's say you were planning your takeoff or departure from an airfield and if you have an engine failure you don't want to carry on flying your departure route because you might be too close to terrain so for example you're taking off somewhere with mountains around in that case what you might do is define these waypoints to be your emergency waypoints so you wouldn't put them into the primary flight plan you'd use them in the secondary flight plan but you could create these waypoints in the secondary flight plan to have as a backup and then if you have an engine failure you activate that secondary flight plan and follow these waypoints that you've defined uh, that you know is on a safe route now normally emergency turns or emergency uh, procedures after takeoff are defined more clearly than that but this could be a useful way to display it uh, more simply a word of caution though of course these aren't regulated they aren't defined properly they're not certified by any authority they are things you've written in here so if i'm going to write these waypoints and then fly around going to them i don't know what airspace they're in i don't know uh, if they are safe to go to especially lower down of course yeah it's one thing up at twenty five thousand feet over the south of the uk but uh, it could be that you're getting too close to terrain because it's not part of a standard approach or standard departure uh, so that is why we don't tend to use them very much you certainly wouldn't start interfering with a prescribed instrument approach by typing in these waypoints but there is a case where you might consider doing it on approach which would be a, a visual approach let's say you were trying to set up for uh, an approach into an airport that doesn't have many navigational facilities so if you were to just put in the runway into the mcdu as you can see here this we're going to leon which has lots of approaches so it's a very well defined airport but some won't have these and you just have runway an empty runway I'll just say runway 35 right then you would potentially want to define some waypoints so you could start drawing a bit of a route a guide for what you're expecting to fly but remember visual approaches are primarily you've got to be visual with the terrain and you're going to be looking outside but you could use these to help with your situational awareness you could say define it by 10 miles off the side of the airport so you know that uh, at that point you want to be at a certain height and speed and altitude that sort of thing that's that's where they could come in in useful so those are a few examples. Another one would be if you're going uh, oceanic, you might need to define a waypoint based purely on coordinates. So let's take a look at some other ways we can define, define these points. So now back in the MCDU, if we go to data, we get the data index page, which is the source of, <laughs> I, mean, I tend to find that this page, if I can't think where something's hidden, it's usually on the data page. There's, there's loads and loads of features in here. So for example, our equitime point, closest airpoint, sorry closest airports uh, all of that sort of stuff now these are obviously topics for another video but if we go back to data so data index page one we've got lots of information but we need to go to page two so you press the little arrow across and you see two out of two page two and here we have all of the waypoints nav aids runways uh, and in here you can do things like deselect nav aids that you don't think are going to work um, and all sorts of other clever things but what we're going to do is go to stored waypoints up here stored waypoints and you can see that the waypoint I typed in using the flight plan A page, sorry, or the flight plan page, not flight plan A, just flight plan page. You can see it's written here, PBD01, and it's now saved in the airplane. The airplane will remember this point, and it even defines how we defined it. Bogner, 210 degrees, 15 miles. If we go to the right, we have our second waypoint, PBD02, uh, and the bearing and distance. It does show us the latitude and longitude of these points, so that is a useful feature. If we carry on going, we can define another waypoint. So let's go to point 
three we need to you can't actually scroll to it i just discovered <laughs> you need to go new waypoint and in here we can create the ident so you could let's say you're just going to fly over your house so you could type it in as house and then you can put in uh, a series of ways to define it so i'm not actually going <laughs> to put it in my house but uh, let's take uh, verl as the next waypoint so v-e-u-l-e -E, and we can just do exactly the same thing. So Verl and then it's place bearing distance for this middle line. So Verl slash 20, oh sorry, 200 slash 20. And that can just go straight in there. And lo and behold, it will be drawn on. It won't be drawn up here. So why is that? Well, it's not part of our flight plan, remember. We've just entered it as a saved waypoint. So if I type store, now it's saved. Sorry, yeah. So we've entered it and now it's saved. Now it doesn't appear up here. So how do we actually get to see it? Well. I've called it house, so instead of having to type it all into here, now I've saved it. I can just go H O U S E, and we're going to go to there before Verl. So let's, I oh know it's after Verl, so we'll put it in just after. And, and apparently there's a waypoint called house somewhere in the world, but we've got our one 57 miles away. That's the more likely one. And lo and behold, there it is house. So it goes Verl. We're just turning the wrong way. Uh, and then house. So let's go direct to, uh, let's go direct to Zamab. So we can see it a bit better but there we go so now we have an easy way to to create these waypoints and route direct to them again chances of you using this during the cruise are very slim it's why my knowledge on this is a little bit rusty i actually had to, to look a few things up here because it's not something i use flying around in europe so there will be airlines that use this and there'll be parts of the world that use this especially if you don't have many defined waypoints europe obviously very busy airspace with lots and lots of waypoints already so rarely need to do anything like this um, but yeah, it could be that you're avoiding a certain piece of airspace or a danger area or anything like that. In a way, this is more similar to general aviation flying because this is the sort of thing you might end up doing if you were creating your own flight plan through uncontrolled airspace, things like that. And again, there will be people out there who operate airbuses in uncontrolled airspace or without all the luxuries that we have uh, when we are operating under radar control. Anyway, there we go. So that's another waypoint. We can go to new waypoint. Uh, we can call it another one or whatever we fancy. Uh, so I'm going to call this one Manta, which probably is a waypoint. Uh, type it in, and then I can define it by latitude and longitude coordinates. So this is pretty obvious. You just type in the coordinates, uh, and this is what you'd use if you're oceanic. You can just type it in there. There is a way to actually enter that into the flight plan page directly as well, but you could do this, and that makes it easier, because once you've saved them all, you can just type in the, the idents that you've called them. Some airlines will have these saved, I would imagine, already in the MCDUs. They might define them in the database so that the pilots can use them. Uh, and that's one idea. Finally, place bearing, place bearing. So this is quite a clever one. Uh, it's an old school way of navigating. But if we wanted to define a waypoint from two other waypoints, um, you can do it. You don't need a distance because you need that intersection of the lines. So, for example, if we go back to our navigation display, this one's going to be a little bit harder to explain, but uh, it's quite a common way of navigating. If we have two VORs, we can actually draw a line or we can see where we are on which radio we're on. We can draw those two lines onto our map and figure out where we are. Now, this is not something you're going to do day to day in an airline environment, but it is something you'd learn when you're learning to fly and you become a commercial pilot. So in this case, let's say I wanted a waypoint that from Verl is 120 degrees and impacts would be... Um, something more northerly let's go for north so one two zero and north so all i have to do is type in verl one two zero and that is my first place bearing and then i can type in the next waypoint let's see if i can format this right impacts so what i'm doing here is i'm not using these waypoints for anything except to define another one impacts and let's go um let's go zero zero five see if that works oh format error so obviously read the question, place dash bearing, and it's even got the dash written there. So Vels dash 120 in packs of 005. Oh no, come on. Dash 005. Hopefully, there it is. And let's store that. We called this point Manta. So I'm expecting it to be somewhere over here, sort of across of those two lines. Um, so let's go flight plan and type in Manta. But yeah, so that is that is a common way to fix your position if you are... We'll go there after house, shall we? Let's go after Vel. And there's our closest one, 50 miles away, defined. And there it is. It's drawn on the line from Vel and the line from Impacts. This is because um, I've made a mess. Let's get rid of the house waypoint. <laughs> Just confusing things. And we can clear that up. Again, so impressed with the functionality of this, this flight plan now. 
And there it is. Uh, the man's away point is now in there. So great. This is, uh, again, used for all sorts of things. But it could be that your emergency turn says, fly along this radial, and then when it crosses another radial, um, you should then make a turn. So you could define that point. You could literally draw it in because you know where those two radials cross. I hope this makes sense. This is <laughs> this is a bit of a, a bit of an abstract concept at times. Um, let's go back to data and look at how we get rid of them. So now we have all these points stored. Our waypoint one, two, house, and Manta are all in here, and it shows you how we defined them as well, and then written there are the coordinates. Uh, so how do we get rid of them? Well, if you want to delete just one, so let's delete waypoint pilot waypoint one. Clear, clear, and it's gone. That's it. Out of out of our concern. So that's great. If we want to de delete them all, we can press delete all and then confirm. But we get this message, flight plan element retained. So it's got rid of all the waypoints except the ones that we're using because Manta is being used by the flight plan. So the Airbus is clever and it says, well, I don't want to delete that because you're using it. So I'm going to tell you that I've, I've kept it uh, and tough. You're going to have to keep it there unless you get rid of it from the flight plan. Uh, so there we go. That is um, a typical, typical way through it. So how do we get rid of this last one? Well, you actually know if the pilots before you have used a pilot waypoint you'll actually find out because when we check the data aircraft status page it says this stored waypoints routes runways and navades so these are things that pilots have put in and you can just delete all uh, when you're setting up because it could just get full of, of junk so if you fly general aviation or you rent aircraft at all you might find the gps is full of stored waypoints that pilots have used over time and forgotten about or they defined it as their house or their mum's house and they've written uh, coordinates and so on on it uh, and then it, it clogs up the the gps uh, so this is a really good one the airbus just shows us that it's, it's all is all here and i quite like it. it it makes me think that you know somewhere in the world someone is just flying their airbus around for their own amusement <laughs> going where they want outside of controlled airspace but of course when you're operating in an airline environment it, it's just a lot rarer to need these waypoints it's not something i use very often but it is something i have used uh, more so uh, when flying in like i say uh, more uncontrolled parts of the world or places with uh, less uh, complex and defined approaches i'm sure there's other reasons as well as oceanic out there so i, I do apologize if I've, I've missed those but um it's just an interesting little little feature something you also can do is you can actually save a whole route into the mcdu and this is something i have used a lot if you if you define a route in the secondary you it's not functioning at the moment because of course secondary flight plans don't work in the a32nx just yet but one day they might and if they do hopefully we'll be able to then save those as a stored flight plan so you could set up your return route already and save it in here and then use that but again uh, if you if the next pilots take over the aircraft that's no use to them because they don't they're probably not flying the same route and if they are they don't know that the route you saved is the correct one or the same as theirs just it's unlikely that the routes change all the time so uh you know we tend to delete these when we take over the airplane and just just go with what we, we need so that's all for today's video thank you very much for watching and as ever thank you to the fly by wire team for taking the time and effort to put these these uh, really advanced details into this add-on or oh, i say add-on this this freeware project from microsoft flight simulator it's fantastic that people can just pick up the base game uh, or simulator and they can then <laughs> just just find out all of these these advanced level airbus details really really like it so thank you so much to them thank you all for watching i hope you've enjoyed it uh, there'll be more guides and tutorials on the airbus coming as well as live streams in plenty of airplanes as well as the airbus so do please subscribe if you'd like to see more of those otherwise we'll see you again in another of those videos or live streams soon thank you bye bye